Well, hello everybody. It's Danny back from Deep South Homestead at Pecan Grove again. Uh, trying to get all my videos done. All my containers around me, and most of them are planted with the exception of three or four of them. Uh, got a lot of good stuff in them. I actually planted some Siberian dwarf kale in one of them here. I didn't show that on video, but I love kale. Uh, but that's not what this video is about. Uh, the video today uh, it's a little disturbing to me what I'm going to be talking about. I've listened to a lot of the uh, uh, agricultural Mississippi Agricultural Board meetings and stuff like that. And it's a little bit disturbing as to what's going on in our state. I talk about this on Porch Time a little bit. But we're actively losing our land to foreign nationals everywhere. I mean, uh, we had a particular group came in here and bought an 88 acre farm in Mississippi and that uh, kind of sparked the interest of some of our legislature that they need to start looking into stuff because we actually have laws in Mississippi that says you can't sell land to someone who's not an American citizen if I understand it correctly. Uh, and as I mentioned in Porch Time, also, there's lots of land and stuff being bought up in Mississippi under LLCs. Now, an LLC can, it's just a way of just hiding things, basically. Um, it's a way of people, say, of protecting themselves from lawsuits and stuff like this. But I could go and form an LLC if I was, a, if I was from India. I could go form an LLC and I could buy a piece of property in the United States under an LLC name. And... It would be perfectly legal to do that. And that's what's concerning our legislature here in the state of Mississippi now is how far have people how far have people gone? And the and the portion I mean the, the, the video today is how far are you willing to go? Because after sitting and listening to some of the statistics of the, what's going on, do you know that the average farmer, not just in Mississippi, but nationwide right now is sixty years old? 60 years old is the average age of the farmer. What has happened to the younger generation? What that means, and this is what's sparking a lot of the interest amongst our legislature right now, land-wise, is that in 5 to 10 years, a lot of farmland is going to be sold. Because the men and women just cannot afford to keep going physically. And families have become so soft, everybody wants to live the, the fluffy life now. You know what I mean? They, they, wanna, they won't want to get out and work on the land. They don't want to farm. They want to cushion. And they don't care what grandma and grandpa and mama and daddy have worked for their whole life to have and to achieve. They just want the cushion. They want the financial result from it so that they can live a cushioned life. And that's very disturbing. There's so many farms right now that were generational, been in farms for been in families for generations. And all of a sudden, we're at the point of them fading away all because of the almighty dollar. And guys, people from other countries are standing in line to buy these farms. Now, that should be disturbing because what? who was the guy? Henry Kissinger made a statement many, many, many years ago that said, whoever controls the food controls the people. He also, I believe it was him that made the statement that whoever controls the oil controls the people. So, that's where we're at. Whoever's controlling the food will eventually control you. Because even though you don't farm, if you go to a grocery store to buy your food, you're being controlled and you don't even know it. Because you're at the mercy of the market. Whoever's controlling that market is controlling your ability to survive. The prices of that food, the healthiness of that food, all that stuff is being controlled by someone else because we as American citizens have taken our hands off of the food system because it's too much work. 
or I don't want a can. Oh my gosh, how much work that is. We become a soft nation. Our grandparents canned all the time. Our, our grandparents preserved their food all the time. It was a way of life. They did what was biblically right by preserving their food for a year so that their food would last from storage to storage. They saved their own seeds. Now we don't even save our seeds anymore. We go, oh, I'll just order them online or I'll go here or I'll go there. Well, guess what? Monsanto, Cargill, all these places like that, they are all taking note of that and they're sending out sister and companies that's buying it under fictitious names and you order seeds and you go, oh, I ordered from such and such. Well, the parent company is Monsanto. They will eventually control the system as far as seeds go. And if you haven't learned how to grow and plant and save your own seeds, then you too will fall prey to being controlled by another system. Because if you're not able to be self-sufficient with your saving of your own seeds, the growing of your own food, then someone else in the very near future will, I'm not saying they might, they will control your life as the way you live it, as how much money you spend on groceries, and your ability to have the type of food, the healthy food that you need to be able to stay out of a doctor's office. Because with all the genetically modified food that's out there, all the hybridized stuff that's out there, you know, I mean, you talk to a scientist from a wheat factory, and he will tell you that wheat today is not for human consumption. Because there's like eight or nine different chemicals used on wheat to get it from a field to your plate. And none of those chemicals are healthy. And yes, the FDA steps in and they go, oh, well, it's based on so many parts per million. Well, if you got so many parts per million of this one, so many parts per million of that one, so many parts per million of this one, and you add them all together, those parts per million add up for the human body. The human body is not designed to take in all these synthetic chemicals. We are designed to use organic food. And guys, let me say this. The food that your grandparents ate is not available for you today. Your grandparents could grow a lettuce because that's what a lot of people today for some ungodly reason think lettuce is the king of everything. Your grandparents could grow a lettuce and eat one salad. You would have to eat eight or nine bowls of that same salad today to get the nutritional value that they got out of one bowl back then. Let that sink in to you. 90% of all food coming out of a grocery store, vegetable-wise, whether it's fresh or not, even a farmer's market, has very little nutritional value because there has not been the soil samples and the analysis is done on the soil to see what's missing in that soil so that it's there for the plant to take it up. Yes, does the fruit look beautiful or the vegetables look beautiful? They look fantastic because they have been synthetically loaded with everything so that they look fantastic. But the plants are nutritionally and minerally void. It is so important, guys, that we learn to do our own food system. That's why I'm, the title of this video, How Far Are You Willing to Go? Are you willing to sell your family's heritage for the almighty dollar so you can live a cushioned life? Me, I'm in the business of buying land. I want more land. I want, like a, a friend of mine from another county next to me, somebody asked him at a restaurant one day, said, Sir, do you want all the land in the world? He said, No, I don't want all the land in the world. I just want what joins me. And... That should be our mentality. Everybody wants to get littler and littler and littler when our grandparents wanted more, more, more because they saw... Guys, they saw the future. They wanted for their families to be able to have a place. The world we live in today, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Families could care less. 
grandparents had huge farms. They raised food on those farms. They fed people. They fed communities. They fed states. They fed nations. The, the, the kids come along after that. They could care less. They're sitting in a cushioned, air-conditioned job somewhere in a high-rise in a big city, and they're making mega bucks, thinking that that's going to get them through life when the man in the field is the one who's actually keeping you alive. Think about that. The farmer is the one that without him, you or me cease to exist if we cannot raise our own food. We've been sold a bill of goods by the devil and by a political system that we don't have to grow our own food, that it can be provided for us, and we can, we can go off and we can live a cushioned life working and living inside an asphalt jungle, and we have sold our soul to the devil. How far are you willing to go to let this continue to go? My plea for today is that please, if your family owns a farm, if your family owns land, do not sell the land. Please, hang on to the land. And make it part of your family heritage. And I realize, somebody's going to say, well, we can't pay the taxes on it. I realize that there is a system out there that has been set up to make us where we can't afford to keep what we have. Am I going to sit here and tell you that I'm never going to sell a piece of property? No, I'm not going to say that. But if I sell a piece of property, I can tell you this much. It's going to go to somebody who will use it for the purpose that it's designed to be used for. I'm not going to sell it to some foreign person to be used for their political gain. Now, once it leaves my hands, I have no control over what happens to it after that, and neither will you. But the bottom line is this, guys. We have got to start keeping our heritage our heritage. In America, we're the land of the free, the home of the brave. Remember the, remember the songs when we were kids? I know I probably don't, probably most of the people under my voice probably don't remember these songs, talking about amber waves of grain, all this kind of stuff. We used to sing about this before school ever started in the mornings. We said the Pledge of Allegiance. We've done all these things. We thanked God for our heritage. And today, that means nothing to anybody. Everybody lives for the almighty dollar. That's why when Pecan Grove come up for, come up for sale and I had the opportunity to buy it, I bought it. Not that I was rich or not that I could afford to buy what I wanted to buy, but because I knew somebody else from another place that had no business of this and was going to break it up was looking at it. And I said I can't let this happen to another piece of property. I've got to put it back into what it originally was, which was a farm. And guys, that's where we got to go. We got to quit selling our soul out for the dollar. And we got to get back out and we got to put the farms back up. We got to get them back to working. Right now, the drought has been so bad in this state and in this part of the world down in here, in the south. Farmers around me have sold almost every one of their cattle. I'm hanging on to mine. I'm having a problem keeping them. I'm not lying. The grass is short. But you know what? I'm going to hang on to them as long as I can. I'm not selling out for the dollar. Because there's going to come a day when people are going to want beef and they're going to cry out for it. And the farmers are going to be gotten rid of all the beef. And guys, that's going to be a sad, sad situation when all the farms start going down. And there's no meat for people. Other than printed meat or lab-grown meat. This type of stuff, you want to stay away from all this stuff. Now this video is very controversial. It may get pulled down. I don't know. But at this point, if you hear this under the sound of my voice, how far are you willing to go to keep your family heritage and to keep food 
on your table. Food for thought today, guys. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.